Good morning. I'm going to do a brief tutorial on how to clean pellets properly. This is a picture of the H&N Barracuda match. The anatomy of it consists of the bore, or the barrel that it's going to go through. This is where it touches here and here. The head, waist, and skirt, much like a woman. So why are we cleaning these? Because we have lead dust, and lead dust is part of the manufacturing process. Lead dust can be anywhere on the pellet, however it can collect typically up the skirt, which can destabilize the pellet. So, without further ado, this is what we're cleaning. Let's do it. You're going to need a few items. First of all, use some liquid soap. Of course, you're going to need pellets. So, we've got the Barracudas, right here. You're going to need a container. I bought this from the dollar store. It's a coffee pot container. The reason I bought it with a handle on it, cost me $3.66, is because you're using really, really hot water and you don't want to burn your hands. This is supposed to be, you know, a fairly pleasurable thing. Now we're using a strainer. Now check this out. Do not use for food. This will always have lead on it after we use it. So we're going to use this to rinse off our pellets. Next, I'm using a little canning jar and this stuff, which I don't endorse or anything, but it is awesome. It's called, it's made by Napier and it's called Power Pellet Lube. Um, it will prevent the oxidization of the pellet and also give you higher velocity, uh, better accuracy, which I have found personally. And um, it's pretty good for choked barrels, which uh, a lot of Walther slash Lothar barrels are. So they're heavily choked. Um, so let's get to it. What I've done here is I've got this, as you've already seen. And I'm going to open up this can of pellets. I've got this pulled off because you don't want to watch me fumble with this. So I haven't done any of these. I've never seen these pellets before. They're they're virgin pellets. So here we go. Look pretty clean and they're well formed uh, as most H&N uh, pellets are. I mean, they, they really do manufacture a great pellet. So here we go. And I just do uh, 200 at a time so that I can just clean them up in individual batches and put them back in a... Here's some soap. And let's get some water going. Uh, I'm using 160 degree Fahrenheit water. Okay, so then we're going to agitate them. And this is hot water. I got it hot before I turned the camera on. So what I usually do is I'll do this twice. And you're going to see why we're cleaning these. Okay, so I'm going to grab my strainer. Right, I'm going to dump this in here, just so I don't lose any down the drain. Okay, now let's see if we got any crap here. Yep, here we go. So, see these little flecks? This is all pieces of lead that are kind of a byproduct of the manufacturing process. This stuff, we're going to talk about a little later. But this is why we're removing it. Okay, so I'm going to rinse. I'm using hot water so that the pellets will dry better. And I'm just going to rinse this container up, get all our lead out of there. Okay. So, here we go again. I'm going to dump this in here. These pellets have a very thick skirt, so you don't really have to worry about damaging them. More so. And let's do it. Now the reason we use soap is it emulsifies a lot of the oils that are on the pellet. Uh, a lot of different manufacturers use oils. This prevents oxidization of the lead. And uh, JSB is rumored to use some sort of a graphite stuff, but I haven't had very good success with JSB pellets, so I use the H&N Barracudas out of my Daystate Airwolf, which is a phenomenal rifle. But that's, that's a, well, that's in another review. Okay, so I'm agitating it, 
really hot water. See we'll rinse here. Let's see if we got anything. Yeah, we still have some flex here. Here, here, here. So second time around usually removes some lead too. So I'm gonna rinse this container out. Again, I'm using hot water. Now, I've got my strainer, or as the Brits like to say, a sieve. Just kind of agitating them here. Again, I'm still knocking off lead particles. And that. So here we go. Now I'm gonna dump this on a cotton towel. And I'm just going to roll them. Okay. And then what I do is I get my wife's hair dryer and I dry them. Now, that would be really boring to watch on a video, so why don't we go to some pellets I've already dried? Here we go. So, here's our already dried pellets. Now, the reason that we dry them with a hair dryer is to get the water off because with lead, you can get a lot of oxidization quickly. So you always want to dry these pellets. Take a look up the skirt in here. You don't, you, usually you can get a droplet that will stay there. So always make sure that droplet's gone. That's where I usually look for them and gauge whether or not they're dry. Okay, so again, like I said, these are dried and cleaned twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in this jar and because we're going to lubricate them now, let's see if I can do this properly. Actually, I'm just going to scoop them. So, oh, you know what I would do is I'm going to just take this jar and I'm wiping it out because I have lubricated pellets in here before and sometimes there's lead left over, which there is. Look at that. See, it's everywhere, these flakes, right? So one more time for good measure. All right, so, ooh, I tore my glove. Okay, in here. Now, I usually go half, approximately half, and I take this Napier pellet spray, and I just give one pump, okay? Then I add the second batch. And another pump. That's all it takes. Um, I've heard that when you're using this Napier, uh, less is more, so don't over lube your pellets. Then I tumble them. Oop, this one here. I tumble them up in this, and not, you know, not violently, but just kind of just basically mixing this oil around. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull a pellet out, and I'll show you that it really is lubricated and it gets to all of them, because I'm gonna put it on this nitro glove and you'll see. That should good. Okay, so I'll just dump a couple out here. And you see that? See that oil on my nitro glove? There's your coating, and that's really all you need. Some guys are kind of superstitious and they believe in just doing this right before a match. I put Napier on them and store them this way. Storage. You can put them right back into the can they came back out of, or came out of, sorry. Or you can have one of these little posh kind of Gucci pellet cans. I love them. I don't make any money off of this, but they're great. Um, got some treated pellets in there already. Or you can use one of these, which is a Wilkins pouch. Take a look inside there. The reason I'm just recommending these is because they're clean already. This here, this stock kind of pellet can, it still needs to be cleaned out. It, uh, it gets wiped out and you get a lot of lead dust in there too. So, because I'm doing kind of bulk, I'm doing a thousand at a time here. Put them back in here. They all magically fit back into the tin perfectly. That's why I do one batch at a time. Check that out. Still some lead in there, right? Hence, that's why we're doing it. Now, let's talk about why we're doing this. And I'm just going to do the overview here. 
okay, you've already gone through the getting started, right? You always want to use gloves. You want, uh, you know, ensure that any containers or apparatus that come in contact with the lead, they should be permanently segregated from the household food preparation equipment. Okay, now you're going to use hot water because it aids in drying uh, the pellets and emulsifies the oils that are coating the pellets. Use liquid soap because it rinses off uh, and it's a lot better than the solid soaps. You're going to agitate it. You can use a plastic container so as to not damage the pellet skirt. Now when I say, no, oh, sorry, container, I mean strainer, sorry. Um, you're going to rinse with hot water and then rinse some more. You can repeat that, which I have. Then use a hair dryer to dry the pellets. And after it's dry, you can use a light oil, right? Which is this Napier. Or you could use pellet. Uh, not pellet, but uh, WD-40. And I've used that before. And a lot of guys say, oh, they diesel and all this stuff. Um, you know what? A light coating of WD-40 on there is all you need, and it won't diesel. So if you are dieseling, you're not doing it correctly. Um, I use pre-charged pneumatics, and they're not as sensitive to dieseling at all. Okay. Um, once that's done, put it in a clean container. We just showed you that. Now I'm going to tell you about lead, just some facts. Lead is highly toxic to human beings and it causes cancer, birth defects, and reproductive harm. So always wash your hands after handling. I'm going to wash my hands even though I've used gloves. What the heck? Uh, lead is a lubricant and lead flakes, which you've seen in the video, they do foul the barrel and occlude or dirty shrouds and sound suppressors, which a lot of British and American people use. So just realize that it keeps your suppressor or shroud cleaner and heck, that's awesome. Um, and these lead flakes really do and can unbalance a pellet. They, they, you know, they can adhere to different spots in here. And what we want for this pellet to work is we want it to be uniform. This pellet, the H&N Barracuda, is phenomenal, or at least is in my, my rifle. Okay. Now, points I'd like to bring forward are that after cleaning a barrel, it's going to take about 20 pellets through it to settle the barrel's accuracy again, right? So you want to clean it up, do your pellets, and then shoot your lubricated pellets through the barrel and just let it settle down. You'll watch. After 20 pellets, the grouping will tighten up again and you're ready to go. It's called fouling a barrel. Uh, another point to bring forward is buy the highest quality pellets that you can afford. That is a match grade pellet. Okay, that Barracuda match is great, but there's lots of great match grade pellets out there. This, you should do this regardless of the quality of your air-powered weapon. Heck, good pellets uh, improve accuracy regardless of how expensive your rifle is. Now, the H&N container seal does state on here, right there, um, that you don't want to inhale pellet dust. So, let's get rid of the dust improve the accuracy, and make it safe to use these pellets. Thanks very much for watching my video. Um, have a great day.